FT's residential team is going to take you inside a new housing development to find out exactly what it means to build prime property in central London. We've already looked at the planning, architecture and development aspects of the mansion apartment building in central London, but the incredible technical challenges of construction fell to another team. In this episode, we meet the structural engineer and the building consultant who helped turn the architect's renderings into reality. In most projects people just see us as geotechnical, structural and civil engineers but on this project we're really advisors to the client because of the, the nature of the negotiations that have to go on with lots of third parties. It's quite a tricky inner London site and there are Jubilee line tunnels running under the site and in order to maximise the depth of the basement over these tunnels we were contacted very early in the process. We've had to develop a foundation system that sits over the Jubilee line tunnels. We've had to analyse the ground movements that are caused by the construction process, which meant we actually had to, in some cases, uh, undo the bolts that, uh, that uh, connect some of the tunnel rings together to relieve the stresses that are caused by the demolition of the existing building and then the building of the new building. So a very complicated building to design logistically and also to build logistically. The top three challenges on this project, I think the first one is, is really the complication of building over the Jubilee line tunnels that run below the site, um, which was further complicated by the fact that um, at Bond Street, they're undergoing massive regeneration and putting in a crossrail um, station at the moment. But they're also upgrading the Jubilee line tunnels. So as well as undertaking checks on the amount of building work that we're doing here, we also had to undertake checks on the amount of building work that, that London Underground were doing as well and try to bring that together. Second thing I, I guess would be the building adjacent to um, listed structures and we have to respect our neighbours during the construction process. And then finally the challenge was to uh, try and achieve the planning height. We manage these challenges by having essentially a large team of around 10 people. Two were primarily involved with negotiations and liaison with London Underground. Um, I would say for two or three years during the construction process. Developments are moving out from the centre of London because of the scale of houses that are need to be provided and also because the number of sites available in the centre of London are few and far between now. The recent trend with residential developers seems to be increasing the amount of amenity in the residential blocks, so increased amounts of spas, gyms, swimming pools and increased servicing, also they were, had a kind of hospitality type component. We've been very fortunate with um, our projects at the mansion. Um, it was procured pre-Brexit, so there hasn't been um, any recognisable impact of Brexit upon the development. Some of the challenges might be for the contractor and for some of the supply chain who uh, may still have to buy some materials, may still have to buy some labour, and so they might see some impact. But actually, from the, from the client and the developer's point of view, um, he's fairly safeguarded from that. In my experience, residential properties have been far easier to, to build. I think we can settle a design early, we can procure with a high level of cost certainty. With our hotel projects, there's a, there's a higher likelihood of design evolution during the course of the project, meaning it's very hard to manage control of cost and programme. I started in the industry over 30 years ago. I have spent most of my time, time working in central London and in that time I've seen a huge change. I mean we've seen projects like the Shard, 
uh, 22 Bishopsgate come along and these were projects that were not around 30 years ago. There is still a potential to develop um, within the centre of London and the way we would see that is to unlock some of the more difficult sites that people haven't utilised before. We think there is a huge partnership available with Transport for London and Network Rail and other third parties. There is a large amount of area that's available on railways to build around, around stations and to build over railway lines and we've estimated that if you were able to use 5% of that land in London you could probably build around 250,000 homes.